No, this is not some concept car of the future, promised for delivery in the year 2001, but Toyota's very latest Supra, which looks set to take on the best in the competitive sports GT market and put a few vastly more expensive supercars to shame. There's so much to say about this new Supra, it's difficult to know where to start. The shape is eye-catching, to say the least. Stunning, brilliant, horrible, ugly. It's all a matter of taste, but certainly the heads I've seen turning suggest the former. They love it, and so do I. Under the lightweight aluminium alloy bonnet, is a massive engine that brings the art of turbocharging another step forward. I've always been a bit anti-turbos myself, feeling they're a rather crude way of creating brute horsepower. But under here, there's some pretty high-tech stuff. Hidden away somewhere is the Supra's very special two-way twin-turbo system. The music of turbo power is not the thrill of a V12 Ferrari, more the whistling and twittering as the turbos spin up to speed. The twin turbos on the Supra work together in harmony to provide the big boost of a single turbo as well as the responsiveness of a smaller unit. The result is very little lag and a strong power delivery through a wide rev band. The enjoyment of driving this Supra really does begin as soon as you sit behind the wheel. The dashboard layout and driving position is more like that of a single-seater racing car. This hoop of instruments around the steering brings everything easy to hand, easy to operate. The three main dials, though, are a bit disappointing. They're rather basic in design. And I do feel that a car that goes as quickly as this, it would be better to have the speedometer in the middle. The six-speed manual gearbox is actually made in Germany by Getrag. And whilst it's simple to use, it's easy to find all the gears, it's rather spongy in its operation and slightly disappointing. Handling-wise, well, the handling is probably one of the Supra's strongest points. Its manners are impeccable, with light steering and plenty of lock for tight manoeuvres. I'd already put it through its paces at the Millbrook Proving Ground, and it was hard to fault. No nasty vices, no nervous twitches, just mild, predictable understeer when the limit was reached. Only the steering feel disappointed, being too light and sometimes slightly snatchy during high-speed direction changes, but this is a car with well-sorted suspension and brakes to match. Toyota haven't resorted to any four-wheel drive, four-wheel steer gimmicks, and even with the traction control turned off, the rear-wheel drive Supra kept its rear wheels firmly under control as the 326 horsepower were fed through them. This is a real driver's car. The overall concept of the new Supra is similar to that of Honda's NSX, to build a sports car as light and as strong as possible, but also as easy to drive as an everyday saloon. As with Honda, they've used as many aluminium alloy components as possible in an effort to improve the power-to-weight ratio and assist both handling and braking. So, brilliant to drive and very comfortable indeed. But what about room in the back? Well, with my driving position, there's no legroom at all. Mind you, if you accept that it's only a two-seater sports car, you'll find there's quite a bit of storage space in the back.
With the new Supra, Toyota have produced a sports car that has the performance that you'd normally expect from a Porsche or a Ferrari. Yet they still cannot quite match them for either their prestige or the quality of their finish. Still, it's quicker than Porsche's 968 and at £37,500 when compared to the price of the Ferrari 348TS, I could have an automatic to commute to work with, her manual version as well, kept hidden away just for the weekends. To the 